In this lecture, we are going to introduce the topic of chemical nomenclature. Now, chemical nomenclature essentially is a set of rules for naming chemical compounds. And the set of rules that we're going to be focusing on for you know, this discussion and throughout the class are going to be following a convention known as the IUPAC naming convention. So the IUPAC uh, acronym here stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Okay? And it's this union of pure and applied chemistry that essentially has set the global standard for naming conventions. And the goal of the IUPAC naming system is to essentially assign every compound, right? Every compound should have a name um, from which an unambiguous chemical formula can be determined. In other words, every name should map onto a unique formula. Okay, And so coming up with uh, conventions for naming variety of compounds in this way um, is going to give us a nice convenient way to talk about um, chemistry in all its different forms. So for this first set of mini lectures, we're going to be focusing on naming conventions for three classes of chemical compounds. And they're actually compounds that we've had some experience with so far in the class. So the first type of compounds, the first class of compounds that we're going to be looking at are so-called ionic compounds. The second class are going to be molecular compounds. And finally, we're going to round out with a mini lecture talking about the naming of acids. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of these three different classes of compounds just to make sure we're all on the same page. So ionic compounds are compounds which comprise of two or more ions held together by these so-called ionic bonds. In other words, it's electrostatic attraction between positive and negatively charged ions. And so the example that we've seen most so far are these examples that contain a metal and a nonmetal, where you have a metal that has a lower affinity for electrons, and as a result, that metal tends to give up its electrons and essentially transfer them. So in this case, sodium transfers its electron onto chlorine to form Cl minus, and you end up forming a positively charged metal, negatively charged nonmetal, um, like we see here in the example of sodium chloride. And if you have this whole then ionic structure built up, held together by these electrostatic attraction. Now, it turns out that there are additional types of ionic compounds. And a very important class of ionic compounds that we haven't seen too much so far are these so-called molecular ions. Now, a molecular ion is a molecule that is comprised of two or more atoms, our definition of a molecule, and it has a non-zero net charge. So the example that I have up here is this uh, nitrate ion, NO3 minus. And I've written out three different uh, equivalent representations of this NO3 minus molecule. So the lines are representing bonds. So we have a nitrogen atom bound to three different oxygen atoms. And there's a variety of different bonding arrangements that um, you know, we'll talk more about later in the course. But each one of these arrangements, as you can see, they're all equivalent. And all we're doing is moving around some of the electrons here by denoting where we're placing this double bond. And each one of them has a negative charge associated with that molecule. So what I want us to do then is to take a look at you know, what this molecule actually looks like in space. What does this NO3 minus molecule look like um, in three-dimensional space? How are these electrons, and in particular this negatively charged uh, you know, the electron that's get this extra electron that's giving this negative charge, where is it located? So to do that, uh, what I'd like us to you know, focus on is a computer representation of this NO3 minus molecule where I'm using a blue sphere to represent nitrogen and the three red spheres to represent the oxygen atoms. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is use some computer techniques um, that uses a, uh, an equation, a famous equation that we'll talk more about in the class called Schrodinger's equation that allows us to calculate where these electrons are found on the molecule. 
and the resulting charge distribution is shown here in blue where the negatively charged regions are you know, a, a darker colored blue. So as you can see, this molecule has a, a sort of symmetric arrangement of negative charge where that overall negative charge of the molecule is essentially spread out or distributed over the entire molecule with the largest amount of concentration on these oxygen atoms um, at each one of the, the ends. Okay? So what I want you to see here is that the negative charge, this uh, negative charge associated with the NO3 is distributed over the entire molecule. So rather than having a charge showing up on individual atoms, as we did in the previous examples with the metals and nonmetals coming together, um, then the case of these polyatomic ions, you actually have a negative charge associated with the entire molecule. Okay, and then our next class of compounds are the so-called molecular compounds, which, as you know, are compounds where <clears throat> the covalent bonds are, are essentially holding together uh, atoms, and those atoms held together to form this molecule are, are forming discrete molecules. So this would be like our, our examples of, say, glucose or, you know, oxygen gas, O2 gas, or water, right? So you have a, a discrete collections of atoms, okay? And remember that the key distinguishing feature between a molecular compound and ionic compound uh, is this fact that uh, molecular or covalent compounds share the electrons, okay? And sometimes there's an asymmetric distribution of electrons. One electron or one atom is pulling greater electron density than the other. Um, that can happen, right? However, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that those electrons have appreciable electron density around both atoms. They're being shared, okay? So you can kind of think of this little tug of war um, type game being played, okay? And then our, our third class of compounds are acids, okay? And remember that our working definition of acid is a substance that produces H plus ions in solution. So there's a whole bunch of these guys that show up in our everyday lives, foods, right? Um, you know, power sources, batteries, right? Our digestive system is a facilitated by the presence of a strong acid solution, okay? Um, and there's a variety of different types of acids. And so we're gonna focus in this mini lecture series on naming two different types of acids, so-called acid halides or binary acids and oxy acids, okay? So that'll be our final lecture. Okay, so then let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we're going to start off our first discussion by looking very closely at the naming conventions for ionic compounds.